Hey, this is me building a $3 million per year business in public. The way I do these videos every single day is I start with some YouTube comment Q&A. That's just to deliver you guys some value. And then it also is a growth hack because the more comments I get on my channel, the more engagement, the more engagement, the more YouTube recommends my stuff. Then I build and strategize in public before finally doing some growth stats across YouTube, Instagram, and my products. So if you don't know who I am, no upgrade to pro. Thank you too, buddy. I'm at 174k subs on my main channel, and then this is my daily updates channel, which is almost a 12k. And when I say I do a YouTube Q&A, I just take this community tab, and then I scroll all the way down to the very, very bottom of the page. Okay, that's what I'm doing right now. So um, I answer the last question on any one of my videos. If you guys have any questions for me, just drop a comment, and I'm more than happy to get back to it. Um, I answer everything does not matter what you are asking me. You could ask me what is my favorite type of coffee. I will happily answer that question. Well, I probably shouldn't say I'll answer any question. Don't want anybody to be super crazy. Um, AK Intake says, uh, today I believe Nick is not an AI. Matthew the potato gives me a fire emoji. Can someone please give the timeline when he answers the title question? The whole thing about the timestamps is good. It's just difficult for me to um, do this. I mean, like, you know, I... The whole point of this channel is to be as low production requirement on my end while also capable of delivering the highest value. If I were to start going back and time stamping everything, it would take me a fair amount. Even like a three minute addition to my schedule here, I think would uh, make this a lot less valuable for me. So apologies on that in advance. Uh, if anybody wants to do the thing for me and timestamp the videos, that'd be really cool, but obviously no hard feelings if you don't. Hypernova Tech AI says, hey Nick, love what you're doing and the information you provide in your videos, love the consistency. Can we target multiple niches for AI automation? Yeah, I think that's a great question. And actually, I highly recommend that you target multiple niches, not just for AI automation, but for anything that you do in services. The reason why is because, well, there are a couple, but the first big reason why is because people think that, let's say you attack three niches. They think that if you attack three niches, you're doing three times the work. You're not doing three times the work. The reality is the same messaging that works for niche A is very likely in part to work for niche B and niche C. So what you get is you get three times the market surface area for maybe one and a half times the work. And anytime I see a discord between an input and an output, that's the definition of leverage and you should take those opportunities where you can. Number two uh, is if you were to, as a total beginner, pick and choose a niche and that niche were just to happen to suck. You could spend a large chunk of your first few months in any business model fighting uphill. Instead, it's better to hedge against your uncertainty. As a newbie, you don't know what you don't know. And so rather than being super confident, saying I'm going to attack this niche with every fiber of my being, best to attack three, uh, two or three niches simultaneously. See which ones are the easiest for you to push. And even if you don't have a ton of experience in those niches, then just, you know, double down and um, put, put all your eggs in one basket, but do that after you've already validated that niche is okay. Okay. Second question is, can we also sell an AI service to multiple niches? What would be better? I don't think there's any difference between these two. And I think this is just a semantics thing. So rather than just talk past you, I'll say these are basically the same thing. AI service, AI automation, uh, for the most part. I mean, you're not just manually copying and pasting entries into ChatGPT, are you? No, you're probably using a no-code tool like Make or NADN or Zapier or Lindy or one of the many tools to, you know, standardize and, and, and make inputs into outputs. So yeah, same thing. Um, and anytime you guys see, by the way, over the course of the next few weeks and months, you'll probably see like new names for this business model. It's not going to be AI automation. It'll be like AI infrastructure partner or like AI growth operator or AI systems provider or whatnot. Anytime you see this, just know it's the exact same business model. It's just repackaged. It's kind of like the same way that you could take an old stale product and you could rename it, add cool, sexy, uh, fancy packaging, and then immediately double the price and reinvigorate a brand. Or I don't know if you guys have been to hotels recently, but hotels did this big thing over the course of the last like five or 10 years where they basically took the same shampoo that they were selling people. Then they just put them in nice, neutral looking, you know, olive green tone bottles with like cool names like silk and oak or some shit like that. And now uh, you get the impression that when you go into the hotel and you get a, you know, do your little shower or whatever and use their body wash shower gel, you're getting a significantly better experience. The reality is you're not. It's the exact same product. You're just repackaging it. And so same thing is going on with the AI automation industry. Um, people are getting a little more tired of the, uh, the term AI automation for many reasons. And I won't get into that, but, uh, anytime you see these business models changing over and over and over, yeah, it just ends up being the same thing. Oh, that's really interesting. Uh, okay. Harsh says, Hey Nick, thanks for the awesome video. Quick questions for you. If you go back to when you're just starting out, what's one piece of advice you'd give to your five-year-old self? Well, I definitely did not start entrepreneurship at five years old. Let me just take a sip of this coffee. Well, I think, hmm. I would say 
drop the pride because I've been asked variants this question multiple times, and every time I try and come up with something new so that people have heard me answer one, don't just hear me answer with the exact same thing. But I'd say a big thing um, now, today, if you were to ask me to go back in time, at least today's answer to that question is uh, to drop the pride. Yeah. I wasted a lot of time and I wasted a lot of energy using really crappy, ineffective approaches when I could have just dropped the pride, just gotten a job, probably bought myself some stability and then also bought myself some runway to be able to do things like spend money on, on lead acquisition. Because I had become infatuated with the idea of entrepreneurship and not really the results of entrepreneurship, it was just that the idea that I was going to be my own boss and work for myself and that nobody would control me or whatever, um, I made a, do- a lot of very suboptimal decisions early on. And I bet you if I had just like joined the workforce earlier and if I had built up um, you know, a good base of savings or whatnot, I bet you I would have gone much farther simply because I was unable to take very high leverage approaches to lead gen and stuff. I was unable to justify spending money on cold outreach. I was unable to do whatever. Dude, I was busing to get to uh, business plazas to walk around in uh, a $22 value village blazer that I thought made me look professional and, and then knock on doors and sell a $250 a month marketing service. Like, like you don't need to do that. I was selling to like furniture stores whose owners didn't speak English. I tried to like learn <laughs> in uh, Surrey an area that I frequented back in the day, just because there were a lot of these business plazas and it was kind of like a good use of your time. I, uh, I learned Gurmukhi, which is uh, like, a, you know, it's like the Punjabi spelling. Like, it's like the Punjabi alphabet, specifically so that I could like quickly read the storefronts and then see whether or not it was something that I could realistically sell. Like that's a ton of wasted time, man. If I had learned a little bit more about Legion way back in the day, if I had had the money to invest in Legion way back in the day, I probably could have hit... 5,000 times the volume um, for exactly the same uh, input. And accordingly, I would have got 5,000 times the results. So yeah, drop the pride. Like entrepreneurship is not um, so much about the fact that you work for yourself. Uh, you got to deal with way more shit as an entrepreneur and you have to swallow your ego way more, I would say. So if you're approaching entrepreneurship from that whole, like, I want to be my own boss um, angle, I think you're just being really silly. And I was once silly. And if I could go back in time and correct my five-year-old self, I would have him stop being so silly. What are the key steps I should take right now to scale my AI agent agency to your level as fast as possible? Well, I think AI agents are just now getting to the point where you could start delivering some actual value with them. Yeah, started over the course of the last couple of months. But a year ago, if you asked me that question, I'd say stop selling AI agents, they're pointless. But uh, we're just now getting to the point where the accuracy and reliability are good enough that I think you can actually drive valuable outcomes. AI voice agents um, in particular. So I wouldn't have you drop that. But uh, yeah, key steps, I would say you just need to focus on volume. Most people's expectations surrounding volume are way, way lower than they really should be. What I mean by that is they think that in order to get the same result, they need to do maybe 10 to 20 times less work than they actually do. So if you just reframe and re-anchor your expectations as 10 or 20 times more than what you think, and just in terms of the number of leads you have to hit, the number of calls you have to have, the number of people in your network, the number of conversations, um, I think you'll be a lot better off. Okay, what actions would you prioritize for rapid growth? I think I just answered that. Roughly how long did it take to reach where you are today? Uh, my whole life, I guess. Yeah, 29 years old. 29 years young as of today. My girlfriend always says, um, I'm 30. So I poke him up and he's like, you're almost 30. Ha ha. <laughs> and I was like, uh, I'm like, shut up. You're still a teenager. Not just kidding. <laughs> She's definitely not. Chris says, uh, I saw an older daily update where you mentioned how you speak and got good at it. You mentioned that you think about it like you're just talking to yourself. It seems to allow a lot of fluency, articulation issues, auto solve. I'm going to use that framing to see how it goes. Thank you. And it goes, curious about your automation agency, how much time do you spend on client work in a week versus um, how much time were you spending in a week when you're at the peak with the agency? Yeah, time that I was spending in a week were, was the overwhelming majority, man. Probably like 50 hours a week, I would say. Now, when you say client work, you just mean everything, right? Like all encompassing. You're, pro- you're talking front end, you're talking like fulfillment, you're talking back end, client relationships, client management, all that stuff. Um, now, I mean, I have a partner. The partner is now taking on the f- majority of the work, the vast majority of the work, I'd say. We're still working out like the best way for me to be involved in the business. I'm thinking the front end makes the most sense. And yeah, you know, we've uh, done a number of sales calls over the course of the last couple of weeks to that end. It's working all right. So I don't actually know entirely, to be honest. And I think if I were to give you an answer, it would not be like a good, a good answer because we're still sort of figuring out this new approach where, you know, my main leverage is the distribution. I have crazy distribution now, obviously. And so that's a big asset. And because I have that established value, I don't actually need to like transfer my time into that value. 
So just trying to think about like the highest leverage areas to do so. I think the highest leverage area, just while I'm brainstorming, um, maybe you guys can get some value out of this. The way I think uh, my highest value leverage action in an agency where I control the vast majority of the distribution, the, the, the area that I think I need to apply to is just the very intro. What I'm thinking of doing is doing highly leveraged sales where I now just record a Loom video, welcoming the person to left click, answering any preliminary questions they have, and then spending my time edifying my partner, who I frame as being the perfect person to handle the delivery of the business. Uh, I can knock these videos out in five minutes or so. It's the very first point of contact they get when they get into my business. And this is a project that later can turn into, you know, $500,000 LTV if we play our cards right. So I think that makes the most sense because you just get that instant dopamine hit. A lot of the people that watch my content obviously want to work with me. They want to get the impression that I'm going to be involved in some advisory capacity. And I will be involved in an advisory capacity, but that's about it. So I think I need to make it really explicit. But this still allows them to get that like quick little like buyer's remorse solved, right? It's like, hey, it's like, yes, you're working with my agency. You're not going to be working with me. But here's why this person is perfect to fulfill everything that you need. And, you know, the first conversation you have is with me. So you get something as a result of submitting your personal information. I think that's the vibe. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to doing that. Cyrese, I believe you are shirtless in this photo. Let me just share your nipples with the whole world. Hey, Cyrese. Um, awesome. Watch the original video on the schoolers community. Love using school. Respect what you're doing through business. Thank you very much, bro. And then let's do one more from Beehive Clips. He says, Hey, do you think hotels are a good niche? I have a buddy. Hmm his family owns multiple hotels. He's very familiar and want to get him to close for me with other hotel owners. They're not very high ticket, but it can still get the ball rolling for me. Is there another service you'd recommend for hotels or am I on the right track? Man, everybody's got very interesting profile pics here. <laughs> Let's uh, blow that one up too. Do I think hotels are a good niche for an AI voice agent? Um, that's a good question. Yeah. Yeah, my first thought is yes, because the average order value hotel is not very high. Average stay is probably what, three days? Average rate is probably what, like 250? Margins are pretty rough because it's like hospitality is very people focused. So if you could shave off a little bit of expense, that'd be good. The issue is what is the primary? Okay, two main issues with this now that I'm actually thinking about it and my hungover brain is starting to be able to process this better. Um, two main issues. The first is the entire industry is based off of hospitality. So if your voice agent slips up or they get the impression that they're not talking with a real person, this is going to have a deleterious effect on how they're going to feel working with you. That's number one. Number two is, what is the primary method by which people book hotels nowadays? It is not through voice, to be clear. It is through booking.com or something. People rarely call into hotels nowadays. Probably 20% of all the bookings have a calling, a call in, I would say. So aside from just answering routine questions, which probably doesn't take up the vast majority of one of these people's times, which you probably could just outsource to some sort of call center anyway, the value of an AI voice agent is comparatively low. Because um, the whole like premise on AI voice agents is you install them in businesses where people need to answer the phone right that second or they lose the lead. That's really the only area in which it actually makes sense. And the only scenarios in which that makes sense are often low average order value industries where you know it's like a salon appointment or something where if a person doesn't get in touch with you the salon owner right that second um then realistically they're not gonna you know they're not gonna want to like work with you they're gonna just keep on calling over and over and over and over again so that's my take on it uh hopefully all that makes sense i got a call actually right now so let me just do some rand stats really quickly run you guys through what the plan is so 174060 on the main channel, growth has slowed considerably over the course of the last little while. As I know, and have repeated on multiple occasions, because I'm not producing, actively producing content right now. Uh, I'm getting back to producing content. But uh, not right now. Okay, 11748. We're going to stick that right over there. Cool. That's, that doesn't sound right. I gained five subs when the average here has been like 95. I feel like I probably typed in the wrong numbers, probably like six or something like that. Anyway, um, and then where am I at? What am I doing? I uh, just went on a cool boat trip. <laughs> yeah, with the girlfriend's family. That was awesome. Uh, I just went tubing. Never been tubing before. I've never done like any boat sports or water sports, but the whole family is like super wa water sporty. So that was pretty fun. Wakeboarding or wake surfing or tubing, um, knee boarding or whatever. I don't know. 
man. But uh, like half of my stomach is now filled with lake water because of just how badly I consistently ate shit. So I'm going to go jump on a call. Got an agency hot seat with uh, Make Money with Make. Thank you guys very much for checking in. No business strategy today, but uh, we're getting back to that pretty soon. Tomorrow I'll be back home. And um, yeah, I'm going to talk long form about my goals with content over the course of the next few months writing on a lot of what I wrote in the video, uh, in my big long blog post at nixrf.com, which you guys can check out if you want. Thank you guys very much for the time. Looking forward to seeing you all tomorrow.